Uh, all right, now to our top story this morning. New satellite images show Russian troops are now just 30 miles from the border with Ukraine. The U.S. says an invasion could happen any day, something Moscow denies. MTS Tayyip is in Kyiv with more on this story. So, MTS, good morning. Where do things stand right now? Emery Vlad, good morning. Well, those intelligence reports, which are just staggering to read, warn of mass casualties, the displacement of millions. Well, they've just set alarm bells ringing across Europe as Ukraine remains caught in the middle. Real guns, real bullets for a possible war with a very real adversary. This group of civilians are being trained to use automatic weapons. Whether Russia invades or not, anyone guess, but those who come here for training are preparing for the worse. Instructing these urban fighters in the making are military veterans who've spent years fighting pro-Russian separatists in Ukraine's east, including this sergeant who goes by the name Alex. It must be terrifying, though, to have so many Russian forces, so much Russian weaponry right on your doorstep. It's not too terrifying for us because we fight already eight years, you know, war every day from 2014. U.S. intelligence officials warned that a Russian invasion could kill up to 100,000 civilians. But many Ukrainians still remain unconvinced Vladimir Putin will attack. On newscasts across Ukraine, there's barely a mention of the tensions. Instead, the top stories are a supermarket scandal and Ukraine's fashion week. Pablo Klimklin is a former Ukrainian foreign minister. I don't believe uh, in big invasion right now. It's actually not in the interest of Putin. What Putin needs now is to raise the stakes, to ratchet up pressure. Now, all that pressure, and there's so much of it, has led to a flurry of international diplomacy. You have the French president meeting with Vladimir Putin in Moscow today, and Germany's chancellor will sit down with President Biden at the White House as world leaders try to end this conflict, guys, without bloodshed. And yes, right, you know, I understand that life needs to go on. But Fashion Week, I, I can't even imagine that they're planning a Fashion Week when you consider the type of coverage that we're doing here about the possibility of a refugee crisis, about casualties. How are Ukrainians reacting to all of this? It's astonishing, Anne-Marie. You know, since I've been here in Kyiv talking to people about the possibility of a Russian invasion, the possibility of mass casualties, the possibility that millions of people could be displaced, and they say, look, we're paying attention. It is concerning, but we're going to go on with our lives as normal. But I think more crucially, when we really consider the feelings of your average Ukrainian, they're sitting there and they're looking at this and taking very seriously the fact that there are huge numbers of Russian soldiers on their borders, that there's a huge amount of weaponry surrounding them as well, and that there's so much talk about this potential invasion. And that's why we, of course, are seeing people signing up, volunteering, trying to get this kind of small arms training uh, in case something like that happens. But people say, take a step back, know our history. You know, we are a country that emerged from the ashes of the Soviet Union. Uh, many people here speak Russian. They have family in Russia. They feel connected to Russia, and they simply don't believe that Vladimir Putin will unleash the kind of violence that intelligence agencies around the world are warning about. But the reality is, is that those Russian soldiers are there. That heavy weaponry is there, and the world is deeply concerned about that. Anne-Marie, All right. MTS, thank you very much.